All right, ladies and gentlemen, the market report has begun. Jesus Christ. I, I still don't get it. Oh, Bro. Boy. Bro. I still don't get it. I Listen, I got a copy. So it's not like I'm hating because I don't have one, but it's just like, yeah. I, I think the absurdity of it is it's not a rare book. And a three and a half or nine ten is ridiculous. Like, you get. Well, it's not, it's not uh, like a common book, but it's every dealer not, had one. It's certainly not uncommon in low grade. Well, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like nobody can suggest that that three fives are hard to find. Like they're freaking out there. Uh, yeah. This was a big number. I'm just so amazed at the amount of money that is pouring in to the X-Men uh, market this early. I mean, we're years away from like a, a developed kind of like X-Men on the big screen, on the small screen. I thought that I was like way ahead of the curve. I got together some of my friends and I'm like, hey, let's try to pick some of the cool books. And uh, it was like two weeks later and I was like, I'm about two years behind. Yep. Damn. <sighs> Hey, uh, we all know about this book. We've been talking about this book for weeks. Um, people are just starting to, you know, we so say the same thing. Here's what's interesting about it. If you look at nine eights of um, Giant Size X Men number one and mm -hmm. X Men ninety four, there are um, less copies of X Men ninety four in nine eight condition, and there are less overall copies that have been subbed than Giant Size X Men number one. Um, you know, so I think the uh, kind of exponential growth of giant size X-Men number one uh, has inspired people to go back and start picking up uh, these 94s. Um, I, I was just stunned at this. Dude, you could get a high grade foam 10 for that much. Maybe I saw, yeah, I saw one pop off. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about that because I looked at uh, Foom 10s. I've been looking at them ever since uh, you showed me your beautiful copy. And uh, they're a little bit more than that. They're about twice that. But still, um, they're, okay. they're, right. rela they're, they're free comparatively. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're, they're just a fraction of the price and uh, a super duper cool book. I really uh, think the Foom 10 is probably the next one to pop off. I shouldn't say that because now I don't have one. I was about to say, what are you doing, man? Yeah, I just <laughs> I, I can't. It's like diarrhea of the mouth. I blame myself for Star Wars one. Yeah, I blame or, myself. Or, I don't, or Mighty Mighty War from Power Ranger. We can go down the list. Sentai two. Uh, that's yeah. my fault. Oh, I'm sorry. You mean the the Fruit of the Loom book? That yes. was my fault. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of an idiot. Uh, All right. Anyway, this is interesting. Guys. Yeah, so uh, it's a newsstand. This book has uh, gotten nice and cold. Uh, it is buying season on this one, or it's cold forever. I can't tell which. Um, you know, it's one of the books that I uh, have held on to and, and uh, liked and stacked, um, you know, as many copies as I could afford to, because I think that it's where they go logically after the time period they're in now. Right, like the Revan Malik story is the story that all the fans want. Um, this newsstand nine six seems like a bargain. There's another newsstand nine six that you'll see later in the market report that I think is also a bargain. Uh, but this was a no reserve auction. Um, I, I think I've seen two nine eights that were newsstands total. That's the same number of uh, Ultimate Fallout four newsstands that I'm aware of total. Um, so I think, uh, you know, congratulations to the buyer on this Okay, one. so if you were the seller, would you be pissed? I mean, if I was the seller, I wouldn't have been throwing this up in an off-season, uh, you yeah. know, when Star Wars fandom wasn't bananas in a no-reserve auction. Did um, it end on Easter on Sunday? I mean, it doesn't make any remember. sense to me yeah. either, right? Like, But yes, it did, and that didn't, like, I wouldn't be doing that neither. So, uh, yeah, I think the guy got a deal. There's certainly, uh, you know, obviously some very astute buyers, but um, you can get a regular copy, a 9.6 for about 600 bucks, I think. Um, but, you know, that little bit of a price increase seems like uh, a good deal. Cool stuff. 
uh, I have a couple of these too that I sat on and I'm just thinking to myself, man, I really hope it isn't ice cold forever. Yeah, but I mean, what what's a buy in? I mean, I mean, your buy ins what dollars at the end? Of the yeah, end? yeah, yeah. But yeah. So, you know what? Well, We're raw copies. About- are, yeah, raw copies will cost you three hundred bucks. When I say it's ice cold, I shouldn't say that. I mean, like it just lacks the liquidity that uh, of this to. book had. You know, two months ago when Star mm-hmm. Wars was booming, um, it's a buyer's market for Star Wars stuff right now. It really is. And I think once the Kenobi stuff rolls out, uh, it's going to go nuts. We'll have another Star Wars book that I think was a hell of a deal. If I'd have saw it, I probably would have snagged it. Um, not this one. This one <laughs> This one got all the attention. Um, uh, yeah, so Quinlan Voss, I, I know uh, Carter's been picking these up. Uh, have you not? Oh, hell yeah. Dollar, dollar bin digging. Absolutely. I picked up two of these from our good, our good pal Sleepy on eBay probably a year ago yeah he's still hurting he's still but hurt for the record if you guys want to like uh steal books i know you can't find steals on ebay anymore you should uh join the cgc chat boards and wait for um uh yanni gogolak to have a cgc sale uh because if a book's 80 dollars he'll be like 18 dollars, but i'll pay the shipping it's he's got the best <laughs> deals i've ever seen <laughs> he's like legitimately the most decent uh, comic book seller left. Maybe the only decent comic book Dude, seller left. I sold him some cards, some holograph '90s trash. He's like, "I'll give you twenty bucks." And one was just like burnt to shreds. And he's like, "Yeah, twenty bucks is fine." <laughs> he's just the greatest human being. Did Sleepy literally built a children's museum out of the kindness of his heart with his own money? I know. Yeah, world's greatest. We got he him is. in our community, uh, he and he's one of them. So Yanni Gogolak on the CGC boards. Uh, AKA Sleepy John, I've exposed his identity, is Your unquestionably, I am too, the greatest. How about Carter? Uh, we that we were at that uh, Harper show, uh-huh. and uh, the guy there thought that his name was Yanni Gogolak, the uh, Jeff, like he thought that was his actual name. <laughs> He's like, Wait, your name's not Yanni Gogolak? <laughs> I'm like, Have you ever seen the whole nine yards? No, <laughs> no. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, Quinlan Voss is a good big character. He's always been a big character for Star Wars fans. Um, so I think it's cool. Cool book. Telling what secrets going with for? the small numbers in live chats. You guys get the inner workings of what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. All right. On to the next one. Jesus. I sold mine for 450 and I thought I was a boss. <sighs> not, even, not, even the, dude, it's not even the variant. I watched I him just pull one two weeks ago out of a long box. Really? You got him graded already, Carter? I have 198, and I have a raw copy. Uh, so, yeah. I'm really I'm floored. I'm pissed. Right? Right? I'm, fl- I'm floored at, that, uh, at this price right now. And but the funny thing is, I think it's like I'm floored, but at the same time, I'm like, that could go it's a hard, even higher. It's a, it's a harder book than Ultimate Fallout Four, by yeah. all estimations, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, good luck finding. Remember when we used to like debate about whether or not the all black cover was cool or not? Yeah, good luck finding one of those. Uh huh. All, all the uh, the. Uh, People who didn't care about that shit are now like, I'd like to have a copy also. Look at our, uh, look at our one of our favorite retailers. He, uh, I sold this maybe thirty days ago at a thousand ninety five, and I bet you he thought it was a boss, which he is. So I mean, yeah. it's just going up and going up. You know, I I remember I could find these raw for like fifty bucks, just brutal. Yeah, brutal. and uh, I I think uh, our buddy Joe is uh, dead on. Uh, yep. Kamala's coming when uh, that TV show drops. Um, lights out. Yeah. Good stuff. It's cool to see, uh, like you said, when people are ice cold. Uh, but this book is that she's not even in, in anything yet, and it's still hot. That's what blows me away. Like, if, if something gets talked about and she's in it soon. I mean, she was in, she was in, um, Edge of Spider Verse, but yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Like if yeah. we're all hoping that uh, Miles, you know, we know Miles is coming. Yeah. We don't know, but, you know, she's got to be hot on the heels. And when that happens, does this thing 
Is this thing a three thousand dollar book? Is this a miles? You is this a UF four? I don't know. I wonder if I want to know if uh, the Amazon Silk Television show is actually going to happen because if it is, we're all going to be kicking ourselves in the ass for not buying Sydney Moon books. Oh yeah, they're um, so cheap too, man. Hey, you want me to ruin another book uh, before I have it? Sure. Yes. Silk One Comics Pro variant, dirt cheap. Yeah, dude. I, I listen. I sold mine a long time ago. It's I, dirt I cheap. It, sold it. Yeah. Buy it again. You're saying buy it again. If the Amazon show happens, we'll all hate ourselves for not having one because they'll be like three grand instead of like four hundred bucks. Right. You know, but it just depends. It, it, the problem with Sony is they're like, I've got seventy five projects that are going to happen. You know, and you're like, uh, what? Just get one out. Day? What? Yeah. <laughs> Madam Web? What? Like, so who knows? Uh, but Cindy Moon's coming. It just might be five years down the road instead of three. Yeah. Well, here's another one I'm surprised you put up. Yeah, is that fucking amazing? Mm. Oh, this oh. one goes out to you, Dino. It oh, is man. gorgeous. Totally. I mean, gorgeous. You should see the interior line work. And, uh, you know, I, I think um, if, if we're going to be real honest with ourselves, uh, we should all be uh, digging in our pockets and spending the money that uh, we can make on, you know, this modern trash and going and buying uh, Golden Age treasures. No, uh, you shouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> I'm about to run Dino's market um, because it, it the comic market is bleeding up, right? So, like... Yeah. We saw the entry level for uh, giant size X Men, Hulk 181. You know, you name it, uh, pop first, right? Like, uh, and then it crept its way all the way up to the top, and then the top went boom. And uh, then we saw the the prices uh, tick up on Silver Age keys, right? Uh, whether it was ASM one, uh, you know, or the AF fifteen, or, or some of the other books that uh, are now just soaring in price, and I think that uh, you know if you can afford to kind of invest in um, a, a serious golden age book you know like uh, if you're a baller like Joe and you can do one a month have at it uh, if you're like uh, you know everybody else and, and you can somehow cobble away two three grand 2500 bucks to buy one classic cover a year um, you'll never regret it Buying the Golden Age book is like uh, playing double Dutch. You just kind of <clears throat> got to get in. You know what I mean? Yeah. I bought I bought seven already this year. Does that make me something something decent? <laughs> You're special. You got, you're getting the portfolio going. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And, you know, we'll see. I'm more like the guy on the couch. Well. <laughs> what a great book this is, man. It is. I mean, and honestly, for uh, – so is that times 10 by like, he has 10 copies? What does that mean? Times yeah, 10 covers. Cindy, Cindy Comics 37. I like yeah, that. Well, and, and he's got to have in caps headlights. But, but what's 10. X10 mean? Yeah, what's that X means the headlights are major headlights. Oh, like headlights I see. times I see. 10. Right? I see. Okay. okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so <laughs> if, if you you know basically she's on the phone being like I've got all the time in the world to talk and the, you know there's your uh, what's what's a, an appropriate word that we won't be removed from uh, YouTube for saying we might skip this one. Um, There's a word you all know what it is. Yes. Or two or three, yeah. they'd probably remove us uh, yeah. for saying them. But he's on the couch and and there she is and. Uh, yeah, it's a win, man. It's a cool yeah. book. Uh, there's a lot of these uh, golden age uh, romance books or good girl mm -hmm. art or call, you know, in that genre that are ice cold right now. Um, this is the stuff that's collected by, um, in my estimation, predominantly uh, older retailers that are on the convention scene. And because they're not on the convention scene, I think there's opportunities to buy that stuff where there's uh fewer opportunities to score deals on, on some of the other things. So, uh, you know, I mean, and a thousand dollars, yeah, a thousand dollars, not a great, uh, it's not a bad buy. I mean, I, I selfishly, I'd probably be at seven fifty, but, um, I mean, a thousand is not terrible. I, I like that book. It's a good book. I'm, I'm sure they don't pop up every day. So, I mean, Oh my God, never. And it's going to yeah. present incredibly well. That thing's going to yep. slab. Well, I mean, that's the kind of book where you don't have to spend two G's, but you could spend, you know, a grand, uh, spend another hundred bucks to get it, 
slabbed and stashed and, away for a couple of years. Let the census, let, let GPA, I should say, let GPA run a little bit, you know. And, and, and this is the kind of stuff that's trade bait for serious dealers, right? Yep. You know what I mean? Like uh, you want, you know, some trash ass modern books. You, you can, uh, you can get them with us. <laughs> uh, like you can, they'll take it. Uh, Cause they don't see them come up. Um, I think it's a cool one. Hell yeah. All right. On to the next one. All right. So here's the other Star Wars book. I think somebody stole uh, that. I absolutely would have tried to buy at that price. Uh, Carter's looking at that like, hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, Asajj Ventress, 9-8, get the fuck out of here. That's a tough 9-8, um, a small census, and a character who uh, many believe is going to be an Obi-Wan. So um, there's going to be an immediate uh, potential for huge spikes, even if you don't actually wait for her to show up uh, and you just want to hedge your bets and blow it out after, like, episode two of Obi-Wan. Uh, you think people are getting excited about Mephisto and fucking Omega Red. Wait till you see what Star Wars people do when they figure out that Obi Wan is in the Asajj Ventress timeline. Mm-hmm. What's the thing they're all doing with Dirge, right? Amen. Yes, Lord. Okay, so raw <laughs> copies, raw copies of this book. What are they going for? Let's take a look. Um. Uh... Yeah, but they're all beat to hell. Like, because I could have swore the last time I checked, which is a long time ago, the last time I checked, like high high grade raw copies were going for like three hundred. Yeah, no question about it. And when you say high grade, they weren't nine eights; they just presented well and yeah. had a couple ticks. Look yeah. This. Oh, old Denny, the old Stud. noon stand. Stud. Good times. Two two hundred bucks. Okay. Yeah, so they're down two. They're down two. Remember, there was a female casting call, and people were like, oh, it's Asajj. Uh, and that's when this all began hmm. uh, for Obi Wan. Um, you know, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's interesting. 200 bucks, not bad. It's about the norm. Yeah, and that's, that's down about 30% from what they were during the Mandalorian season two. Yeah. Man. So to pay just roughly double for a nine eight man that's that's pretty yeah nice. that's nice no and i might be uh trying to buy those books at 200 <laughs> bucks raw now that i see that they're down and get me in trouble this is interesting uh, yeah so this is a book that i like i think there's very few um i mean very few marvel um i don't know he's certainly not an a-list character but like B, C list characters that are left that haven't been specced to death. Um, I think the uh, end of Cyborg in the DCU with all of the, uh, what's his name, Josh Whedon, um, mm -hmm. sort of like uh, craziness with um, what's uh, Fisher's first name? Um, Ray Fisher. Ray Fisher uh, spells the end of Cyborg uh, and really uh, was the crack that Deathlock, uh, you know, spec sort of needs. Uh, then when we had the guy who's the showrunner for Falcon and the Winter Soldier be like, I want to do Deathlock. Uh, he's raiding, you know, one of those like 90s characters um, that could go bonkers. Uh, it's the first George Perez art. Uh, he does the interior art, not the cover, but the cover is absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, rarely do you get sort of like that kind of sick cover for uh, a first appearance. Um, I think nine eights are still like under two grand. And um, this seems like a book uh, that's got potential. Are you yeah. ready for some good data on this one? Everybody loves it. Yeah. Um, so there's one nine nine. If you guys can believe that. Jesus Christ. Yep. Uh, the other thing I saw was so there is only oh, I guess only seventy seven nine eights, two hundred and twenty three nine sixes, two hundred and seventy one nine fours. Uh, a grand whopping 1500 um, submitted. There's like 11 um, 98 signature series, too, which is crazy. Um, the real interesting part I saw there's only five UK price variants submitted to CGC, and the highest wow. rated is only 9 2. Hmm. 
Wow. It's a little tad that people don't know. A little flex on people. You know? mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. the UK, may, maybe, maybe, maybe. Let's just sprinkle stuff. it down for somebody. Yeah, good stuff. Thank you. That's everybody. I also like the. I also really like the first ever George Pettis, you know, professional work. And yeah, it's Pettis. Pettis. I, I, I was I was told that personally. Pettis. Mm. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, he's a stud, dude. Just the kindest, most decent man in comics, right? Um, yeah, I'm I'm really uh, a, a big fan. I mean, by all accounts, uh, one of the most kind and, and decent uh, men to ever grace the pages of Marvel Comics yeah. and yeah. DC Comics. And if you were lucky enough to get his five dollar commission sketches uh, that he used to do at every show, that took two minutes, but is great work. Um, uh, I feel bad for you because they're awesome. All right, I know everybody probably watching the show has a couple of them. Uh, all right. On to the next one. Oh, here we go. Miles uh, got to show up sometimes. All right. So this is again the other newsstand that I think somebody stole. Yeah. Uh, newsstand nine six of Ultimate Comics number one. I mean, we know what the uh, Ultimate Fallout four newsstands sell for and how few there are. Um, I, I think this is absolutely uh, a buy in the same vein that the uh, Revan Knights of the Old Republic nine is. Um, Certainly a bigger uh, entry point, but um, congratulations to the buyer. Uh, I think if the seller would have held out, he probably could have gotten double this. Very cool. You, I mean, what do you guys think? Am I nuts? I just, it's crazy to see a 9.6 book of go for that much money. I, I get how rare the newsstand is, and I get. Like these, did these come polybag too on newsstands? That's the question I've been asking and, and trying to Google and find an answer to, and I don't know. Um, I sort of assume that they would have, uh, which makes it even more interesting because are there newsstands out there that are still in the polybag? Um, I've played that polybag game and not done well. Uh, so, you know, I, I hope uh, other people uh, get lucky in ways that I haven't. Um, but, I, I, you know, I, I just think. Uh, the late Marvel newsstand collectors are smart buyers. They remind me a lot of the Spawn collectors. They're the guys that are really serious about modern comics. They got a ton of money. Um, they're smart about specs, so they're making money, slinging books, buying books. And um, it, it's it's one that I think will retain its value over the long term. Interesting. Well, we'll see. We'll see what uh, we'll keep our eyes on these ones for sure. All right. Here we go, talking about Spawn. Uh, this is crazy, yeah. I got nothing. Spawn, Spawn 64, 9.8, $2,300. So you, you guys all know about um, the CGC registry collectors, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the only 9.8. So, I have one of these. I think they came polybagged. A uh, clear polybag, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, but if you uh, if you want to be the um, winner of the registry game, you just had to spend twenty three hundred bucks. Uh, and those guys are serious um, about the registry, like real serious about it. Um, and, and there's a lot of guys who are sellers that play to that market. They'll look for books that. Um, just are astronomically expensive uh, comparatively in 9.8 because the census is so small um, and target those books. You know what I mean? So, Sub them at 9.8s and... Are you ready for this too? So yeah, there's only more. There's only 10, right? There's only 10 submitted. So it's not like people... like It's not like spawn number one, right? It's not like there's thousands upon thousands, right? So 198, 596s, 394s, and a 90, right? Um there's a new stand edition of this. Yeah. Zero submitted to CGC. Well, oh, they, I'm sorry. One, one qualified at a 9-2. Wait, time out. They have a separate new stand registry for this? Yes. When the hell did they do that? Did they start doing that for all spawns? I don't know. Because if they did, that's fascinating. Yeah, so there's only one qualified it for some reason. It must have been like a topic filing signature, I'm guessing, that they didn't verify and somebody sub the sub it. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah right? Right. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> man, yes. uh, so this is another it. book. I think, would you think dollar bin fodder? You know, like, do you think anybody's like rip, ripping through the spawns? Like, number 60, I don't know. I mean, 
It's it's well, it's a middle of run sixty four. I mean, yeah. I mean, but I, I'd like to go back to that issue of the oh, yeah. uh, the newsstand thing, right? Yeah. Okay. So we've all talked about you know forever, like grab those newsstands, grab those newsstands, mm -hmm. uh, like the late Marvel newsstands. Um, yeah. But it's usually only when there's a price variant that CGC will have the separate registry for it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, they started to do a separate registry for the Batman Spawn uh, book, yep. which is one that I love because, like, that was a big deal for me when I was a little kid. Um, and I wonder if it had to do with the CGC signing, right? That if the, the CGC signing um, with McFarlane just got them to be acutely aware that uh, collectors really uh, appreciated the difference between newsstands and, and directs. So, because they don't so, have one for Spawn 1, right? Uh, let me look. So here, here's a here's an interesting tidbit for everybody. Um, so I looked at number 63 through 67, no, no newsstands. Um, mm. and, and I'm looking at, I'll look at number one. Give me a second. I'm trying to, they're not alpha there. They're not numeric. They're kind of all over the place on this one. Uh, there is not a new stand for number one. Not designation, at least, or a separate registry, you want to call it. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's that's interesting to me. Yeah. Why uh, 64? I don't know. Was there a price variant because of the poly bag? I, I, I mean, I'm just trying to look, wonder. I can look. Let me see if I can even find one. Oh, oh, right. Yep. Here's one. Let's see. Oh, man. Uh, you want to go to share? Hundred dollars. Uh, you want me to? You guys want to see it? So I just buy it. So I just is it in the poly bag? Uh, negative. Okay. Okay. So that's first no. order of business. And no. is the price tag the same? Dollar uh, ninety five. Oh, sorry. You want to take off the, take off the thing? And I'll share it. Uh, so. So yeah, dollar ninety five. That's what it says up there. Let me zoom in for everybody. Dollar ninety five. I don't know if that's the. That's weird. Look at the back. Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah, dude. When those freaking uh, UPC symbols are on the back, the newsstands on the back, that's one like you got to commit to memory because yeah. they're out there in so, long boxes. So, uh, okay. So I'll leave this up. It'll probably be gone in the next three seconds. Um, but a hundred bucks, do you, do you buy in at a hundred? Uh, it's, it's, it's all black cover on, on the spine. It looks good. Kind of. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I got, I got to really look at it. Yeah. I mean, oh, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah like, but all those spawn newsstands are freaking destroyed and they sell I had for a spawn, major money. Dude. I, I had a spawn black and white. Number one, nine, eight back in the day. I feel like that this, that book came in, in, in poly bagged with another book for some reason. And I'll have to find mine to make sure, but I wish John Brown was here. He would tell me instantly the guy's a man when it comes to spawn. Yeah. All right, now on, on to the next one. There you go. Shout out to uh, Big Leg, who is on vacation in my in Florida right now. It's a nice copy of that book. So everybody knows the legend of this book when it comes to Leg, right? So Leg, uh, he 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 started buying these when nobody knew about them, and uh, he he had them like in my comic shop for like two bucks, three bucks, right? And he just kept adding them and just, you know, for three bucks, who gives a shit, right? He kept adding them and adding them and adding them. And he finally, they finally got one. It was a, a new stand, second printing, all the crazy stuff on it. They got it for like three bucks. It was crazy. Or whatever, super tough book to find. Yeah, it's super tough. Yeah. But have any of you seen one in real life? I've seen one. I've seen Tron. No, never. A dude was walking around Baltimore with it, uh, trying to get people to pay a reasonable price for it. I mean, I don't pay a reasonable price for almost anything so uh but that was the one copy i saw in person and uh it sure as hell wasn't as nice as this one what do you want for it i want to say 900 was Ooh. the asking price and i was just like bro i'm not your guy but man yeah, fuck that. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not cheap. the guy right uh, i'm not the guy but somebody was probably the guy joe stud good job yeah look at this Look at everybody! Everybody pops them out. It's like the Wonder Woman, uh, Ooh, that Wonder wait. Woman Canadian variant that Stein. Said yeah, but ghost. what 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 people don't realize is those two guys, along with three other guys, have been in contact with each other on some form of Google Chat for the last five years, yeah, saying, "Hey, I, I I'm still looking for one." Like they're all talking to each other, 
you know, uh, did you find one? And so they're, they're actively searching for it. And that's, there's certain books that are like that. And this is one of them. The closest you know, I've come is that Robin number one newsstand. Oh, uh, that's a lot that's more common. I, I, my buddy found one when we were digging together. Um, the Sandman seventy five second prints like this. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. never found one of those, which really pisses me off. I, I, like, one of those I know, myself. right? I, uh, one of our one of our uh, one of our friends of the show found one at a mile high in Denver, just in a long box for a buck. Yeah, and the Superman the ones are worth looking for too while you're out. You know what I mean? Or how about how about my Action Comics six eighty six DCU variant in nine eight? I know? never find DCU variants. I think uh, Half Price Crook takes them all. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that was Doc Man. The Doc you know, that one sucks them up. So, you know that show, man. The show over there is the is the it's called the pro spec list for a reason because you guys are all fucking super pros over there, man. I'm gonna have yeah, just they, James well, sign some super guys the, pro. The pro diggers. I mean, sweet Jesus. That's the worst part about trying to dig with these guys. I know. And for the record, Dino's real good on a con floor. Like, don't let him give you this. Like, <laughs> I got like, gold age books every once in a while. I just try to buy a couple golden age books and stuff. Yeah. Oh, you know, I used to have one of those back in the day. Yeah. He was a fucking force to be reckoned with. Quick, fast, and a hurry. It's oh, like, I don't know. Ding, 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 ding. Here, you want this? I don't want it. Ding, 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 ding. I'm just like, God damn. I you know, told him. Uh, I told Carter that uh, we're gonna go up to. Uh, he's gonna come up to uh, Okamos in May. Come hang out with me. We're gonna go to con together. It's gonna be good times. Yeah, and Dennis is a sick of it too. For the record, Dennis was buying shit from behind me, from like across the room before <laughs> I even knew what it was. He's like, "I'll take that and that," and I'm like, "Who is this fucking guy?" And then later, he like pulled his mask down. And I was like, I heard his voice. Right, I was like, "Oh, it's Dennis." Right? Um, yeah, it was him. He was just fucking snatching shit from across the room. So. Uh, it's fun if you get a chance to come to our neck of the woods. This book is crazy. This is one Dude, of I've always books. wanted one. Have any of you yeah. ever owned one? No. Me neither. I I, I think I'd again I'd, I think I'd have tried to make a play on it at this price. Not that like there's spec value or anything to it, but uh when I got back into comics, like when The Walking Dead um was like big, this was mm -hmm. like that book. You know what I mean? Yeah. That everybody wanted Jeremy Bastion. Curse Pirate Girl. Mm. Super cool. All right. Look at this what, one. That's what the fuck is going on here? That is Can dope, explain man. to me all of this shit with the once in future? Like <laughs> last week, no one cared, but this week, now everything's a gajillion dollars. Yeah. Hey, it's Ross Ritchie out there, man. So Ross Ritchie's buying his own books? or? Well, I don't know, man, but that guy has got some stuff that was brewing. Funny, I thought. Yeah. No, yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe we get Ross back on the show. You know he's a he's a fan of the show. Maybe maybe we uh we talk to him and say what's up once in the future. Maybe. Yeah, I mean the stuff uh, I saw. This there was that eighth print uh book right that went for some ridiculous amount of money. Well, it was selling for like sixty dollars like two weeks ago, and then it was like eight hundred dollars. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's just I don't you know I either something's a brewing or uh, I'm missing something. Man, you buy X Men ninety four for that much. <laughs> uh yeah uh i defer to the wisdom of my friend uh one mercenot yeah it's crazy it's nuts all right let's uh start getting through some of this stuff this is interesting this is a 1960s hand-painted concert poster for the beatles from hamburg germany this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is fucking history. And this took me into a YouTube hole, or I mean, an eBay rabbit hole that I am going to uh, give to you guys tonight in the second part of the, of the market report. Uh, this poster right here, two bids. I don't know if it's real. I don't know what it is, but how cool would it be to have an original 60s hand-painted concert po poster of the Beatles from Hamburg, like where I, uh, they got their start? I bet, yeah, I bet you, I, I went to a um, geekiness of me. Henry Ford Museum had a uh, institute, like they had the, the Marvel Institute. They had one for the Beatles, actually. And they went through all the, uh, like, iteration of the Beatles and where it started at. I, I wouldn't doubt this wasn't, this was, I bet you this was real. I mean, Super I remember cool. that part. Yeah. Um, so with the Beatles, of course, I saw this. This is a, a summer love cover uh, from 1965 Charlton book, uh, $137. Ooh, I like this. I right. like, love that stuff. I, I didn't know this existed, and this is going on the want list. 
I like this. Carter um, loves the seventies romance books. You do, yeah. dude. That's your thing. Yeah, this man. is a cool one. It's a cool one, man. I'm I'm all for this. I'll, I Boogie would Nights. This. Carter's yeah. Boogie Nights books. Um, this is interesting. More on the Beatles stuff, right? Who who would have thought that this? I used to see this thing everywhere. I swear. Uh, but two hundred and three dollars for the two thousand four McFarlane box set of the Beatles. Um, but I again, bet. this kind of took me down a rabbit hole of musical memorabilia, right? Uh, yeah, I bet our new friend has like eight of these. Oh, dude. Little- we're gonna listen. Um, shout out to Aaron because there are so many things in this that made me think of him and and what we got coming. So, um, but anyways, I got into like musical memorabilia and I thought, man, I, there must be some crazy stuff in there. Well, uh, it, CDs from from those of us who are around during that time, uh, you know, CDs. We don't think much about them. They're worth money, and uh, even from bands that you never thought they would be worth money. This is a band called Breaking Benjamin that I really liked when I was in high school. Here's what? their CD. My Medi- wife's gonna kill me. Promo CD sold for two hundred seventy-five dollars with seventy bids. This is the promo, the radio promo again. But you could find these in in record used record stores all over the country. You know what I mean? So two hundred seventeen dollars for that CD. Well, how about this, right? So I'm a big fan of, you know, Tool, but I'm also a big fan of Audie Granov. Here's a Tool poster that Audie Granov did from San Diego. Uh, yep. They only 500 of them. Pretty fucking dope. Uh, it sold for $368. He, he did a lot of their album covers, too. So people who don't realize, they made a little, little inserts on the front of all their CDs. He did all yeah. that work, work too. Yeah. Damn. And, and, and how about this? So I looked at some Tool stuff. So here's like some Tool concert posters, right, that sold. Look at that. That is absolutely mind blowing. So you never know what you have in your garage. But this kind of also got me down the card road. So I looked at these. Look at these. These rock and roll memorabilia cards from the 60s. There's a Led Zeppelin one, a Jimi Hendrix one, a Rolling Stones one and a Supremes one. And they look at what they sold for. I mean, that 69 Jimi Hendrix uh, one for two thousand dollars. Crazy. Um, so <sighs> absolutely bonkers. So how about this? Look at this. This is Kid Rock. I, I don't know if this was before or after the two short days when he used to try to have like the super crazy white boy high top fade. High top like fade, Kid yeah. Rock, yeah, Kid Rock used to, to – but this is a 1991 Premier Rat Pack Kid Rock card at PSA 10 that sold for $127. He's he's a, he's a family friend. I should call him and see if he has any packs of cards in his closet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So, you know, we, the cards we show that go for so much, it blows me away when you see a real piece of history, an autograph from a president. This is the came out of 2020 Historic Autographs, Presidents of the United States box, Martin Van Buren autograph, authentic with booklet, sold for $710. So, they, you know, I always see these on, um, what's that site uh, that we buy cards from? Blowout. Uh, blowout. Yeah, Blowout, yeah. I always see these historical things and they're like sitting around and nobody buys them. And they're like boxes and cases. I want yeah. like, you know, I just, I don't know. Like, do you buy it? And like, it's like Abe Lincoln's signature. In one. It's like, yeah, what? there are, there are. Well, you, we've seen, uh, wow. you know, um, um, what's his name uh, from cheap fun breaks. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, pull uh, cut patches from Abraham Lincoln and shit like that. This crazy. right here, what I'm about to show you is crazy though. For those of you guys that grew up in the eighties, you might remember Bonkers, the candy. Well, Bonkers had a Ninja Turtle candy thing that they did, and these people kept the wrappers and sold the wrappers for $216. Get the fuck out of here. Where's Paul when you need him? Paul's who bought those. Why <laughs> didn't you so we didn't have to talk about it. Bonkers candy were awesome. I remember them as a kid, man. They were fucking great, especially the strawberry ones. But how crazy is it? Like, this is the type of shit, like, you know, that happens to me where my mom calls and goes, Oh, I got some stuff that I forgot to give you when you were a kid. And they're like chilling in there. And it's like cheap front, cheap front breaks is Houdini, right? Yeah, Houdini. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Just so everybody knows. Um, All right. Uh, This is cool. So I tried to collect every single one of these uh, when I was, you know, probably in college or high school, not because I wanted them, just because I you know, like I would be out and about and you'd see them and I'd be like, oh, I'm going to get these. You know what I mean? And uh, they're selling. So this is series three of the homies set. It sold for $281. They sell for ridiculous amounts. Um, I don't even remember this. 
At you all. don't remember the homies? Oh, no. God, man. It was such a big deal. The guy, for any of you guys that get a chance, go on YouTube uh, after the show, of course, and look up uh, the homies saga. I think Vice did a little documentary on the guy that created them and how he went bankrupt and everything um, because the, of, of how fast, uh, you know, society and, and, and things changed in America at the time that people weren't spending money on little, you know, uh, quarter machines and stuff. But this made me uh, think of George, our buddy George, because our buddy George went went home for Easter and found some pretty cool things, and he found some muscle men, not the pink ones, but the the, the colored ones. And so I did a deep dive and look at some of these muscle men are selling for man. The 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 red one over here sold for five hundred seventeen dollars, and the green one over here sold for uh, five hundred thirty-six dollars. Now I get it; these are probably rare ones, like the Satan cross figure uh, in Muscle Men. Is my shit um, worth any money? Hey, they could be, bro. I mean, they could be. Those are George's. That's George. George's pick in the middle there. So, <laughs> note the like the residue from like crawling around in my parents' attic on my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, muscle more muscle men stuff. Make sure you guys check out uh, our buddy Peter Renna's video on muscle men. He did a, a couple weeks back, I believe. So really, really, I love the old school muscle men. All right, uh, boner stuff. Wow. Right here we go. More boner sales. Uh, Seventy seven tops is a PSA nine sold for fifteen hundred. But this, uh, you know, we got the PSA nine boner, and then you've got the uh, Carrie Fisher card at sixteen hundred, an autographed Carrie Fisher. That was pretty interesting. Um, how about this? There you go, Dino. The 1998 Cardinal WWF Trivia, Stone Cold Steve Austin. This is his rookie. Uh, sold for $721 and 9.5. Yeah. Jeez. I got a uh, I got a story we'll talk about after the market report. Or you want to knock it out now? Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Um, so there's um, Ben Sales, um, and I and I'll forget the numbers, but don't don't hate me on this. I think it was three or four hundred dollars for a um, tops. 2020 uh it's like a reprint of a famous thing with a reprint signature on it of Derek uh -huh. jeter sold for like 145 dollars for a reprint of a card and it wasn't even like slab psa 10 or b you know it, it was just a raw card 110 bucks a juan soto was like 150 reprints that's like us saying hey you can get a reprint of like fantastic four one like the golden age records book but it's like you know it's like a, a mid grade copy and it sells for like crazy amount of money, you know, or, or something of that nature, like a golden age PCH or EC reprint probably is a better, better term. And it sells for a hundred, a couple hundred bucks. This, uh, this next one is, uh, interesting. So yep. this is the 1985 OPG box bottom. So on back on uh, the day tops products, they used to, on the bottom of the boxes, they used to print four cards and you could cut them out. They printed the the Lemieux uh, his rookie year, which is really cool. I own one of these. Mine isn't uh, graded; it's just labeled authentic by PSA. But I think it's really cool to see it get some love. Uh, it, if it's cut out nice and you can get it graded, it, it'll sell for a lot of money. As you can see here, this is a four. I think that sold for five hundred twenty-two dollars. Damn, pretty cool. Um, all right, so I said Vika is in the chat, I, and, and Vika, I love that guy, man. He hit me up uh, when he found a bunch of uh, a Prism uh, a couple months back, Prism football and basketball, when I couldn't find anything. And I, I need to hit, I need him to, to get some luck here soon so he can find some more Prism basketball because Prism basketball just came out for 2021, yep. and I can't find it anywhere. It's in your local Target. It's got Brian fucked up. For it's got me fucked up. I can't like, find people, it anywhere. People I'm are camping it. out. In, in like tense days, like nights and days before, like it's a PS one. Uh, well, how about like, the sicko? The story you told me about. Yeah, I so I went to my local Target and I said, I hear people are. You guys have a thing where you can line up and you give people, you know, one box per person, and so everybody can get something. And they're like, Yeah, we kind of do that. And I go, well, You know, what what's going on? And they're like, Well, our guy is kind of spooked because. He found a tracker on his truck. A person I should put, laugh. Somebody's going yeah. to prison for this yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Somebody had put a tracking dot on his truck to follow him around from store to store to know when he was dropping stuff Look off. Look at Carter's face. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Well, let me tell you guys something. That's what me, I looked like when I first heard this story, and then I was like, ah, oh, this guy's going to prison. This is well, crazy. let me tell you something. Here's the problem. Like, um, those boxes – 
had to have like oh. like for instance that the prism hanger boxes have an msrp of, i think of twenty dollars they're selling mm -hmm. for 150 dollars or more on the secondary market yep that's ridiculous i mean but seven, this is why it's, it's seven times it's, it's crazy seven times like i can see maybe like 40 double it up you know yes yeah. that's, that's not terrible i guess but no. seven times like geez so this is the base uh, Prism Lamello Ball rookie. It sold for three hundred sixty-three dollars. Wow. Now these are gonna drop because these are just you know people go crazy the first ones that hit the market. And, and he's out. Of, and he's out right now too. Yeah, he's out playing. But here's some craziness. On the left, you see a, a brand new this year, twenty twenty-one Zion Williamson second year silver Prism that sold for two hundred and twelve dollars. A second year card. On the right, you have his cracked ice rookie. That sold for just forty dollars more. This is craziness. So this is isn't like in comics where you've got you know the 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 wave that that people just gotta have something the first mm. one to market. Here's a perfect example. Don't be stupid, guys. Like I would take that. I would spend forty dollars more for that Zion every single day. Every that was single a, day. That week. was like the LeBron James uh, Lakers card, right? I mean, when that came out, people yes. were blowing that away right i mean it was lebron's first laker jersey card it was like but you know i'm not spending yeah. 500 dollars well, for that speaking of lebron so in this new 2021 set is one of the most gorgeous cards i've ever seen and it's the lebron card it's lebron oh. it's the number one card it's kind of like a kobe tribute but look how gorgeous that card is I mean, to see that that picture, how they framed it, you should see some of the cracked ice orange and gold parallels with this, with the purple name tag that says LeBron. It looks so gorgeous. But as you can see here, uh, 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 just a regular prism sold for $1,400 of that card. A base one sold for two thirty six. dollars This ain't no rookie. So this is crazy what these are selling for. So be on the lookout at your Targets, your Walmarts, your Fred Myers for prism basketball. Buy them. I don't I, I care. Love, and call I, me if, if you don't want them. I will pay you for them. And, I, and I've done that with Brian. It's it's good times. And my wife looks at me like I'm crazy. But dude, even me, dude, I got a Myers, a Target, I got all that crap by me. Nothing. nothing. It's, gone. it's crazy. It's bonkers. Um, and it it really makes me sad because, man, I would love to. Uh, oh, look to, at this. Joe, Joe hit us up in the chat on this. It was. Um, MJ Fleer rookie card PSA nine sold for a low of twenty two thousand seven hundred today. Wow! And people were like twenty two thousand. That's that's crazy. Not really, because they were going for like seventy five thousand, sixty thousand. Yeah. yeah, dude, I was at a um uh, a card expo here at the IX Center like a couple of years ago, and an entire case of uh, Fleer eighty six was selling for 28,000. Yeah. But like, I'm talking like a case. Yep. They still sell for 80,000 a box now. Woo! Yeah. Yep. Damn. Not a case, a box. There's 36 in a case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, all right, this Damn. is uh, interesting. Look at this. Uh Sokatana vintage collection figure, the 3.75 inch, $511 and another one. This is the uh vintage figure two so this is the clone wars one i guess i guess that's what's the difference i don't see the difference but uh one sold for 828 with 56 bids and one sold for 511 with three bids um march 30th and april 2nd i would probably try to list mine like the second one yeah <laughs> uh this is interesting so this is uh these lego star wars brick heads I, these were in target for a short period of time um and uh one sold for 245 dollars yeah and the lego that's set. what you know that's what uh they call marco on the uh dark side star wars brickhead well, he was – hey, I, I got to shout out Marco on this one because he was talking about this when it came out. Make sure you guys look for this if it's there because of yeah. everybody was going crazy for it. Hey, I really like the new format for uh, Tales from the Dark Side. Yeah. Uh, I, I really think it's uh, a, a cool uh, change, and I've really enjoyed the uh, droid uh, – I don't know what you want to call it, like round robin – yeah, bracket. Bracket. yeah. Um, yeah I think they're doing bracket. some really good stuff over there. If you guys uh, aren't watching the Star Wars show and you want to know, uh, you know, about Dirge and, and some of these other characters before they go nuclear, uh, they are your uh, one stop uh, spot for everything Star Wars related. So please uh, go back, check out some of their old podcasts or wealth of information. Yep. 
Amen. All right. Uh, so this is one of my all-time favorite G.I. Joe figures. I only own one. Uh, they're super hard to find. They were a send-away figure. I remember uh, this. Yeah. So one of my – so obviously I'm a Snake Eyes guy. Snake Eyes is my all-time favorite figure, and, and specifically version two uh, with uh, the, the wolf um, is the best G.I. Joe figure ever made. Storm Shadow version one is number two, and this is basically Storm Shadow version one with a teal paint scheme and they called him ninja viper and he came with two swords either two silver swords or two black swords and i can't remember which one is rarer um and uh, as you can see they're really hard to find and one sold recently they they uh loose they they basically came in a bag uh just a see-through bag uh almost four hundred dollars three hundred and ninety one dollars wow for 18 bids. yeah Wow, what what year is this? Because I swear I don't remember this. This was uh, probably early '90s, late '80s. Oh. This is interesting. So this is a Lego Spider-Man Miles Morales minifigure, a PlayStation exclusive, sold for eight, eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars. Get the f holy, yep. yeah. Woo! I think I think this. Uh, did you have to go on a PSN store and buy it? Maybe. With, there's with, there's uh, another one that's not miles i think it's just a, a regular spider-man that sells for a lot too yeah yeah, yeah Damn. Crazy stuff. uh this is really cool really interesting well, it's not really cool it's really interesting but it's my my it's my all-time favorite you know comic character of uh, the watcher this is the opened version of the marvel select one uh which is like not even the best one and it sold for Opened for two hundred and forty-one dollars. Thirteen bits. Crazy. How many you got of these? How many you got I have, of these? I just have one. I have one, but I never thought it would be worth anything, or I'd buy it. Is it open or is it? It's unopened. You, you got no, this is opened, but you've got one box. No, mine's. I opened it. I fuck yeah, yeah I opened it. Displayed that shit, man. Hell yeah. yeah. I the shit that I liked that I didn't think were going to be worth money. I opened, you know. So like yeah. my 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 the the white uh, cloaked Vader. I opened that shit. I didn't think that was gonna be worth money, um, but here's one I do have unopened. And Nico knows about this one. Our good friend Matt Devoe knows about this one. Uh oh, yeah. Here's that's your, a good price, actually. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a really good price. Yep, yeah. that's a good price. Fuck, I'd have yeah. bought that one. Super tough book to find, even tougher to find it in uh, unopened and in good condition. You're better off buying them unopened and leaving them unopened because uh, if you, most likely it's you're going to open it, it's just going to be trashed on the spine. This is the uh, famed white uh, variant of Spider-Man 2099. They're um, not as bad as the Young Avengers number one, but they're bad. Yes. I mean, they're just a pain in the ass and. Uh, I, I regret selling the, the copy I had. Uh, and I'm probably going to end up being the, the next buyer. It just keeps moving up. Yeah. There's a thousand ways to search for it. I assume uh, that if you experiment with that, you can find some cheap listings. But yeah. um, I forget, like, so they call it like KB2099, uh, Toy Biz 2099, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Legends 2099. Uh, so experiment with that in your save searches if you want to compete. Yep. Yeah. Even the figure sells for a lot if you find the figure. Uh, right. Yeah, the figure loose sells for a lot. Um, so be on the lookout for it. Now, I, I have probably twice as much as these uh, saved for the next show. So we'll end there.